So it's my pleasure to introduce Andreas Herring, who will speak about fundamental manifolds, such that the tangent bundle is not big. Okay, so thank you for the introduction and thank you for uh, inviting me to give a talk in this, uh, in this seminar. So uh, I will speak about joint work with Ji Liu and Feng Xiao. So Ji Liu is former PhD student of mine who is now in Beijing. And Fong, he's a PhD student of Bao Wa Fu. And uh, well, uh, turned out that we have quite similar interests. So uh, uh, we started this collaboration in December. So uh, as usual in my talks, everything will take place over the complex numbers. Uh, although certainly some of the things would make sense in a more general setting. So, um, so I want to talk about uh, final manifold. So let me recall what this means. So if you have X, a smooth projective um, manifold, then we say that it's final if uh, it's anti-canonical. So minus KX, that's the determinant of TX is uh, an ample line bundle. Okay, so that's, the, that's the definition. And um, the question I want to talk about today is somehow one of the most basic questions you can ask when you make this kind of definition. So uh, the assumption on the variety is about the determinant of the tangent bundle. So what can you say about the tangent bundle itself? Okay, so question, if X is final, so uh, what can you say about the positivity of Tx itself. Okay, you know a lot about the determinant, but the vector bundle itself, uh, a priori, not so much. Now, uh, let me mention two classical facts, which are which are known in this context. So um, uh, first one is a classical theorem of Kola, Miyayukamori, and uh, independently Campana in 92. So uh, if you have a finite manifold, then uh, it's dominated by free very free rational curves. Okay, so X is dominated by uh, rational curves. Um, so that's a morphism from P1 to X, such that if I pull back uh, my tangent bundle to X, then uh, this is ample, okay? And of course, since we're uh, on, a, on P1, saying that this uh, pullback is ample means that it's just a direct sum of ample line bundles, okay? So this is known, uh, but of course it's also known that this property of having these kind of uh, rational curves, this is what we call nowadays uh, rationally connected. And of course being rationally connected, that's much more general than, uh, than being Fano. So certainly this is, uh, this is a bit too weak for for this, uh, for, for, the, for this class of final manifolds. Now something which is uh, more specific to the, to the setting of final manifolds is a result of Peter Nell from uh, 2012, who says that if you have a Fano, then Tx is generically ample. Okay, and what do we mean by this? This means that if you have C in X, uh, a curve which is a uh, complete intersection of sufficiently positive divisors, okay, so sufficient, let me just write sufficiently ample complete intersection. Okay. Then again, if I restrict to this curve, uh, then the restriction is ample, okay? So 
if we if we knew that the that the tangent bundle of x is stable then this kind of property is obvious because uh, for these kind of curves you have mehta ramanathan but uh, of course there is of course there is no need uh, for the tangent bundle to be even semi-stable for a final manifold. So somehow this, uh, this property, which Peter approves, some kind of uh, weak semi-stability, which holds for all final manifolds. Okay, so this is what is uh, classically known. Um, nevertheless, these kind of properties, they're still, I would say, rather weak positivity properties of a vector bundle, because, you know, there are some curves which somehow behave uh, well, which tell us that Gx is kind of positive, but I mean, most of the curves, they are not covered by these, uh, by these results. And um, well, we, we would like to have a bit more, um, something more substantial, you know, a stronger positivity property. So what kind of property am I talking about? So let, let me give the definition right now. So if you have X projective manifold and you take uh, V over X, some vector bundle. Okay, so then you want to define positivity properties for this vector bundle and there are different ways to do it. Uh, the way uh, I will do it in this talk, which I will use this presentation is pretty straightforward. You projectivize your vector bundle, then on this projectivization, you have uh, the tautological class, and I will call uh, zeta first chunk class of this tautological uh, line bundle. And then I will just say that the vector bundle has a certain property if this tautological class, this divisor class, has this property. Okay? So we say that the vector bundle V is, you know, whatever you want. So NAF ample, big, pseudo effective. Okay. So these kind of uh, properties, we reduce them to the case of devices where they're well known. So if this tautological is NAF, ample, big, pseudo effective, okay? So this is a straightforward way to define positivity for a vector bundle. You reduce to the case of a line bundle, which uh, we have a lot of experience with, except it's, it's not quite true. Actually, um, the definition is straightforward, checking that someone is, for example, pseudo-effective uh, is not so easy. And this is somehow why, uh, why we had to do this, uh, this work. Okay. Yeah. And now, okay, so that's the definition. Okay. And is there a question? Yes, uh, this definition doesn't depend on the embedding of X into some projective space. Uh, yes, it, that's, that's independent of the embedding. Um, yes. Yeah, just depends on the, on, on the vector body. Okay. Um, and, and excuse me, by yeah. projectivization, you mean uh, the set of hard planes, yes? Yes, I projectivize in the sense of Crotony, yes. Are there other questions? Okay, so um, for today, I will focus on the property that the tangent bundle is big. Okay, so today, so. Uh, focus on property that Tx is big. Um, so which, so for several reasons. First is uh, morally, it's easy to say what bigness means. It means that some symmetric power of the tangent bundle will have many sections, okay? So at least here, uh, the, the moral of the, of the property is clear. And uh, also, so the, the paper which we wrote, it has in the title, not big, but uh, pseudo effective. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that we went through with it and tried really to check also pseudo effectivity. Um, 
but uh, based on this experience, I can tell you that it's uh, it's much more difficult to check. And um, right now, I think uh, the part which is maybe accessible for more theory is certainly the the big part. Okay, so pseudo effectivity maybe it's not. This is uh, this is kind of complicated now. So I will focus on this and now uh, why should we care about this uh, property? Why am I interested in understanding this property? So um, why uh, TX big? Okay, so why do I want to understand this? So first reason is um, it somehow, uh, it, it's, a, it's a property where there's a lot of open space in the sense that if you assume much more, uh, then it's not going to be so interesting. So let me recall this. So more is theorem. If you take X smooth projective such that TX is ample. Okay. So you make a stronger assumption. Well, then you're already the projective space. Okay. So somehow if you assume too much, then uh, you will get a very restrictive, uh, extremely restrictive geometry. And uh, so we, we don't want this. So assuming much more than bigness uh, will typically lead to very few examples. So I don't want to go in this direction. And uh, second reason is that there is this conjecture uh, by Campana and Pietanel. Um, which says that if you have X, a final manifold, such that um, the tangent bundle of X is NAF, then uh, the claim is that X is rational homogeneous. Okay, so in particular, uh, the tangent bundle is generated by global sections. Hmm. So, um, so there are quite a number of papers on, uh, on, on this conjecture. And people have become very good, you know, at using this uh, semi-positivity of the tangent bundle uh, to, to understand all part kind of, you know, geometric features of these manifolds. Um, somehow my interest in this conjecture is a slightly different take. So somehow from my point of view, um, the object of this conjecture is basically assume that some symmetric power has really many, many, many sections, then TX itself has already many sections. Okay, so um, this is somehow the, for me, the, the, the spirit of this conjecture, okay? You make some assumption about the symmetric power and then you got, want to go back to TX itself. Okay, so um, what I'm asking for is, um, I'm looking for techniques uh, to bound M in N such that SMTX has many global sections, or you know, at least global sections. Okay. And so this is um, this is a question which makes sense already in this uh, big setting. Okay, so TX pick tells you some symmetric powers will have many sections, and then you want to go down. Say, um, I can choose M within certain limits. Okay, and somehow the the very optimistic case of Campana Pedernal conjecture would be if you have even this this nefness, then you can go down to M equal one. Okay. But certainly, so for me, the interest is how large do we have to choose M? Okay, so that's one reason. And then uh, last motivation, why uh, exactly um, looking at the property of being big. So there's a work of Grip and Wu 
from 2019. And um, what they do is uh, given some X, which is smooth projective, um, plus, you know, some extra information, they associate what they call the canonical complex extension of this manifold. Okay. Mm. Um, so they introduce this object and now what they prove about uh, this uh, about this canonical complex extension so that's a that's some complex manifold which is typically very you know it's very far from being you know something which we like you know some some projective manifold you know or even algebraic and uh, what they prove is so their theorem is that if the canonical complex extension is an affine variety. Complex extension is affine, then the tangent bundle is big. Okay. okay. So, uh, th so they proved this result. So this is more, you know, complex, really complex analytic geometry. And uh, the output is this property of the tangent bundle. And so when I saw their paper, I was thinking, okay, um, what kind of examples do we have for, for this kind of situation? How, how restrictive is this? Is this really, okay? And uh, so that's the motivation why we started uh, looking, well, well, well uh, I was interested in looking at this. And um, now let let me explain a bit about the results. And before I do this, um, let me let me give a warning. Uh, big vector bundles can be strange. Okay, so big vector bundles um, they can be very strange because you know if you think about an, a big divisor, somehow your idea is on some Zerisky open set, it's more or less like an ample divisor, and then there's some strange thing happening uh, in, at, the, at the boundary. But uh, here, when you do this for vector bundles, uh, things can happen. So for example, you can look at this rank two vector bundle, A plus A star with A ample, and uh, this is a vector, this is a big vector bundle, okay? So you take the direct sum of something ample plus something anti-ample and you obtain a big vector bundle. And th this is very strange because, you know, the vector bundle is big, but the determinant is trivial. If you restrict it to any curve, it's never NEF. So somehow, this guy is not very nice, okay? And certainly you will not be able to deduce from bigness some properties of churn classes. And this is something which is very helpful if you're dealing, for example, with NEF vector bundles. Here for big vector bundles, a priori, all kinds of messy things can happen. Okay, so this is the warning and this is somehow why uh, I guess this has taken some time to be studied. Now, what are, what were the known results? What are the known results? So, um, first thing is a uh, theorem of Schell, um, I think from 2015, so not so old, telling us that if X is toric, okay, so since you're toric, you already have a lot of vector fields, but, uh, you even have more, so he proves in general that Tx is big. Okay, so this is uh, this general result and gives us some more examples. Uh, in particular, when you think about surfaces, uh, so if you have X uh, del Pezzo surface, uh, so the Pezzo surfaces of degree at least six, they're all toric, so they have a uh, big tangent bundle of uh, degree D at least six. 
uh, then the tangent bundle is big. Okay. So this already gives us first some examples. And then actually um, there were already quite a number of results in the, in the surface case. So results in the surface case. So we discovered this literature, you know. Wait, does X have to be smooth? Sorry? Yes, always in, in, this, in this talk, always smooth. Um, Certainly one day I would like to go to, um, to the singular setting, but uh, well, the results which we obtain, they are not correct in the singular setting. So uh, they are- That is the uh, theorem you just stated by Xiao also true in, in singular cases or not even the theorem that is here? Uh, no, I said. think it's, this is not known in the, in this, okay. in the singular case. Um, so uh, back to surfaces. So um, what was known? So there is work by Paris, who's a former PhD student of Stéphane Druel, who studied a bigness of uh, tangent bundle for surface. And also there's a more recent preprint by Hosono, Iwai, and uh, Matsumura from 2019. And so they, I mean, they have more, I mean, they do much more uh, general stuff about pseudo effectivity of tangent bundle, but it's a different definition, okay? So uh, different definition and, uh, you know, stronger definition of, uh, of big, okay? And so for this kind of, uh, for their definition, they work out more or less which surfaces uh, have, uh, have big, big tangent bundle, but it's for a different definition, which uh, assumes a bit more, okay? And then uh, very recently, there's also a preprint by Mallory from 2020. Um, so I think he's a student of Mostatza. And so he does, he deals with the case of degree three and four, the Pazzo surface, so degree three and four Del Pazzo surfaces. And so his paper appeared like, you know, two or three weeks uh, before our papers. And it's, and it's actually very interesting to compare because so it's completely different. So we obtain for, in these cases, the exactly the same results, of course, but the, the technique is completely different so he uses the fact that these surfaces, they are complete intersections and really writes down, you know, exact sequences and, and uses vanishing results uh, to obtain this. And so he works with the same definition as we do. Okay, so these are the, the results uh, that I know of. And uh, now what, what did we prove? What did we prove? Okay, so what is new? So, um, First theorem, so in our paper. So um, first part, so for a Del Pezzo surface, we can say pretty exactly what happens. So if you have X and Del Pezzo surface, then uh, the tangent bundle is big if and only if uh, the degree is at least five, okay? Okay, so you see uh, by the historic result, degree at least six was known, but degree five um, um, was not clear, at least for us, although I think that, you know, uh, basically it's, it was done in, in these papers. But so we, we recover this from, a, from a, our point of view and obtain that this is equivalent to be, have degree at least four, uh, at least five, and uh, let me also mention that property that Tx is pseudo effective, this is equivalent to having degree at least four, okay? And here uh, by degree, of course, I mean the uh, square of the anti-canonical bundle, okay? So that's for the Pazzo surfaces. Now, uh, second part of the statement is if you have X at the Pazzo freefold, Mm. 
And let's just say pick a number one. Um, the, the other cases are easy. Um, so what do I mean by the Pezzo threefold? So by this I mean minus kx is ample, of course your, your final, and uh, the anti-canonical is divisible by two in the picker group. Okay, so with H Cartier. And um, so we studied this specific class of uh, fun threefolds, and uh, here something fun happens because there you obtain that Tx is big if and only if the degree of D is at least five. And here by degree, I mean uh, H cube. Okay, so you have this Cartier divisor and the degree of the Derpezzo threefold, that's the cube of this. And now, um, why do I think, do I think that this second statement, this is somehow fun and, uh, and unexpected? So, um, so you know, fun observation. So, um, I mean, you see that the two statements are related. I um, mean, they look similar, that uh, A and B look similar, bigness that's the same as degree at least five. And uh, of course, one is tempted to say, yeah, probably you reduce one, one to the other. And of course there is a way one could try to do this because if you have X at the Pezzo threefold and you take D in H, uh, a general divisor um, in, this, uh, in this linear system, well, it's known that this is a smooth del Pezzo surface. Okay. Pezzo surface. And so if the del Pezzo threefold has degree D, then the del Pezzo surface, which you obtain as a divisor, has also degree D. Okay. And so uh, what A and B say is that the tangent bundle of this Del Pezzo threefold is big, is equivalent to the tangent bundle of this Del Pezzo surface in it is also big. Okay. Okay, and so that's straightforward consequence. But the point is, there is no reason why this should happen, okay? There is no reason why this should happen because typically positivity goes to the quotient and here it's not a quotient. So if you, what is the relation between these two tangent bundles? Well, the tangent bundle of D sits and the restriction of the tangent bundle of, of X to D. But that's the wrong direction. So if you knew, if you know that the tangent bundle of D is big, then certainly you cannot go back to X, but also when you assume something on X, you cannot go to D because it's a sub bundle. Okay, so there's absolutely no reason why this should happen. And in practice, uh, it does not happen, okay? So uh, example, for example, uh, if you have the case uh, of degree five, okay? So therefore the Del Pezzo surface, you don't have vector fields, okay? Del Pezzo surface, no vector fields. Okay, but for this, uh, for this Del Pezzo threefold, Del Pezzo threefold, we do have a lot of vector fields. I mean, that's, um, that's at least C3, maybe more, yeah, maybe more. Okay, so you have a lot of vector fields. You can look at the restriction to D, but none of them will give you any vector fields on D itself. Okay, so somehow this most obvious manifestation of positivity uh, will not translate to the surface. Okay. Okay, so, um, so you see here something unexpected happens. There's this relation between positivity 
of Tx and positivity of the tangent bundle of this, this kind of fundamental divisor. And, um, and it's unexpected. So this is why I like this statement actually. Okay, I mean, the pets of three folds, they're quite special, they're quite special, but uh, somehow here something unexpected happens and uh, I still do not know why, but the, you will see that the proof of the theorem gives you a first hint why there might be a relation between these, uh, these, these guys, okay? Um, do you have any questions about this statement uh, about theorem one? Uh, maybe it's a good point to ask now. Um, so you can define, of course, the Elpezzo, um, Elpezzo varieties, smooth varieties of higher dimension. Mm -hmm. That's the same problem. Uh, do you expect the same answer to be true? Um, I, 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 would, I, I, would hope, I would hope so. I would hope so. Um, so certainly this looks too, I mean, this looks too good to be an accident, but somehow, so I would, I would say yes, I would say yes, but um, so far I have not understood the mechanism behind this, this observation. So we are in the process of, of analyzing the situation now but I still cannot say definitely why it happens. And a uh, second related question is surprisingly to me. Yes. One Sorry, second. Uh, surprisingly to me, the, the statement doesn't seem to change uh, for any member of the family. Yes. Is yes. That, it, yeah. Is that a coincidence or I mean, is it obvious that it's always going to be like that? Um, no, it's not, it's not obvious. What is, uh, what is interesting, so, is that the degree five case, uh, both in dimension two and dimension three, there's just one member up to isomorphism, while the lower degree cases, they have actual moduli. Okay, so somehow, um, so somehow uh, the, uh, the, the, the big case, at least here, happens only just for, for, for varieties where you don't have any moduli. So somehow there, there is no question. And um, yeah, I, I agree that it's, it, it is surprising. It yeah, is surprising. And of means... course, what you can do is if you, if you do not uh, allow only del pezzos, but weak del pezzos, then uh, you will find jumps in the families. But the, Already because you might get four, extra vector fields. The degree four has moduli. Sorry? The degree four has moduli, doesn't it? Yeah, it has, yes, it, it has, uh, degree four has moduli. And um, I agree with you that, it's a pr that it's, there is no reason why the property shouldn't jump in the family. It does not, it will jump uh, when you when you go to weak weak funnels. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is uh, this statement, and uh, we have proved another statement um, about hypersurfaces. So if you take um, x in P n plus one smooth hypersurface then uh, what we prove is that uh, Tx is big and you could also put pseudo effective here if and only if x is linear or a quadric. Okay. And of course, I mean, we know that uh, for PN we have ample tangent bundle and for quadric also it's uh, tangent, I mean, it's rational homogeneous. So they, uh, these are very special. And then starting from degree three, three, the tangent bundle will not have this kind of positivity property. Okay. So that's the second statement. And uh, now, I would like to talk a bit about the idea of the proof of theorem one. 
Uh, so theorem two uses some, there's some representation part, uh, theory part in it. So this is more special related to the setting. Um, the setup for the proof of theorem one is more general. And so I hope that maybe in the future it will lead to more results and maybe even some partial classifications. So uh, idea of proof of theorem one. Okay, so the basic idea is that we want to use minimal rational curves to construct some interesting devices in the projectivization of the tangent space. Okay, so use minimal rational curves uh, to construct interesting devices. Okay. Okay, um, so let me recall what I mean by a minimal rational curve. So uh, a rational curve, um, F, so morphism from P1 to X, non-constant, is minimal if, um, if its deformations dominate X. Okay, so I have a family, not one, just one rational curve, but really a whole family which, uh, dominates my manifold. So if deformations dominate X. And furthermore, so if I fix a general point in, uh, in my variety, uh, then the curves passing through X form a complete family. Curves um, passing through X so the the curves of this family of course uh, through X form a complete family okay so you have this uh, family of rational curves they dominate X but uh, typically when you go to the go to the limit this rational curve will break up in a cycle of several rational curves. So, you know, run non reduced stuff and so on. And the assumption is that if I only look at those curves, which pass through a general point, then I will get a complete family, which does not break up. Okay. So, uh, such a family, uh, always exists. And, uh, now, uh, fact, we know a bit about uh, the, the tangent bundle on general mi on minimal curves. So general minimal rational curve is uh, what we call standard, meaning that if I pull back um, the tangent bundle to my O of one, so it will decompose in a sum of line bundles. I have O of two. This is my, uh, this is of course the tangent bundle of the rational curve itself. And then I will have some factors O of one and then some O's. Okay. So the, the splitting type of the restriction is very special. And this is for some P in N. Okay. So this splitting type is known. This uh, splitting type is known, and uh, moreover, so uh, quite non-trivial fact, um, you will have p is different from n minus one unless x is the projective space. Okay. So this is uh, this is Cho Miyoka Shepard Baron. And Kibikus, so if you have that for this family of minimal rational curves, um, you have just the O of ones and none of these trivial uh, factors, then um, you're already the projective space, okay? Now, um, so I want to use these uh, 
curves to define a certain locus in the tangent bundle and projectivize tangent bundle and goes as follows. So I will denote by G C Chech and my projectivized tangent bundle. Uh, let this be the closure, the locus, um, which is covered by the trivial quotients. Okay, so covered by um, curves L tilde corresponding to trivial quotients. Okay, so um, okay, so so how do, how does this how does this work? So you have ah, uh, so you have x, you have your rational curve here, and uh, you have this projectivized tangent bundle, and on this rational curve. Well, you pull back the tangent bundle and you you pick out one of these uh, one of these quotients here. You, you you pick them out. You pick out one of these trivial quotients, and so this then gives you a map. Okay, gives you a map, and we call the image L tilde. And now, when uh, I vary in the family of minimal rational curves, and when I vary all, over all of these trivial quotients. I get some kind of family of rational curves in the projectivized tangent bundle, and I take the closure of this locus. I take the closure of this locus, and uh, this is what I call C Chech. And uh, we call this locus C Chech uh, the total dual VMRT. Total dual VMRT uh, of the family of minimal rational curves. So given such a family of minimal rational curves, I define this locus. Okay. Okay, so that's the that's the definition. That's the definition. And uh, this terminology uh, of uh, dual VMRT, this is justified by the following fact. So um, so when you have minimal rational curves, there's this notion of VMRT, variety of minimal rational tangents, which uh, is used a lot in the theory of Wang and Mach. Okay, so VMRT, so um, variety of minimal rational tangents. So that's a subvariety. It's a, um, you know, maybe reducible. It's a sub, uh, sub variety of a projectivized cotangent uh, bundle. Okay, and so this, this is a very important role in the theory of Wang and Mach. Okay, plays an important role in theory of Wang and Mach, which use minimal rational curves to analyze Fano's in theory of Wang and Mach. And um, now, fiberwise, uh, uh, the total dual is the projective dual of CX. Okay, so uh, over a general point, point, if you look at what is this locus over this point, then this is the projective dual of cx okay so this explains somehow this uh, this terminology of dual vmr team okay it's uh, it's dual in this sense and now um so i told you my goal my goal is i want to define uh, uh divisors in uh in the projectivized tangent bundle, okay? And now, uh, somehow the, the bad news is 
uh, the total dual BMRT is not always a divisor, but I would say rather often, okay? So um, somehow important, CCH is not always the divisor. It always has co-dimension at least one, but it's not always a divisor. Um, but so from my point of view, I would say very often, it is in the following sense. So first, if it's not a divisor, it means that the VMRT is what is called a dual defective variety. In particular, uh, the VMRT is, is covered by lines, okay? And now, from my point of view, varieties which are covered by lines, they are quite special. Of course, if you come from the theory, you know, of homogeneous spaces and so on, and, you know, this kind of varieties, then you know it happens in all kinds of situations. But, you know, from a more global classification point of view, being dual defective, uh, is already very special, okay? And certainly in the situations which we looked at uh, for this paper, um, the total dual is always a divisor, okay? Then it, uh, in these cases, it's easy to check that it's a divisor. So at least for our examples, uh, it does the job. Okay, so I define the set it, and in now assume that it's a divisor. Why is it interesting? And this is a straightforward lemma. If you have X a final manifold, um, say with picker number one. Okay. I like picker number one for this problem because there Mori contractions and so on do not help. So this is really um, where I need to develop my own technology. So I assume that this total dual is a divisor, then uh, Tx is big if and only if, when I write down the divisor class of the total dual, so I can write it as a linear combination of uh, the tautological plus lambda, the pullback of the anti-canonical. And now the property of, so this is always possible, and the property that Tx is big just means that lambda is negative. Okay. So in particular, the lemma tells you that if you want to decide if a certain variety has a big tangent bundle, then you just compute, just have to compute this divisor class, okay? So you really have, just have to work with one family and try to figure out its geometry. Okay, so this is somehow why this is a, a, a good, this explains why it's interesting and let me give you the proof because it's very easy. So one direction, this is, uh, this is uh, obvious. And now uh, the other direction, um, if uh, the tot if the tangent bundle is big, so if the tautological class is big, then uh, what we can do is we take a D a prime divisor, prime divisor, such that uh, the class of this prime divisor is um, of the following form. Let's say N, well, no, let's say M, and then the tautological plus uh, epsilon pi star uh, minus Kx with epsilon strictly negative. Okay, so you know that uh, the tautological is big, and now you subtract a little bit of positivity, you make it a bit more negative. Since bigness is an open property, you're still in the big cone, and so you will get this kind of prime divisor, okay? So you construct this prime divisor, but now uh, observe that by construction, the tautological has degree zero on these curves 
L tilde, which appear in my definition, okay, that's degree zero. So this divisor D will have negative intersection with this kind of curve. So in particular, it contains all the curves L tilde, so D is the total dual BMRT, okay? So D is CHH, okay? Okay, so this is easy and this is somehow explains you why this construction makes sense. If it gives you a divisor, then it's a good way, then it uh, gives you a way to check uh, this somehow mysterious property of bigness. And now you have to compute this divisor class. You have to compute this divisor class. And let me tell you about the, the key lemma for Delpezzo freefolds. So if you have X at Delpezzo freefold, and let me recall you that this means that the anti-canonical is divisible by two, then it's known that uh, this variety is covered by a family of lines. So consider family of lines um, on X. So um, these might not be actual lines, but lines means here that if I intersect H with L, then I obtain one. So this gives you a minimal family of minimal rational curves. And now uh, what, we, what we prove is that the class of the total dual William RT for this family of lines has, is given by the form, following formula. It's K times zeta plus the pullback of R over D minus K times H. Okay, now I have to explain the notation. So K, that's uh, the number of lines through a general point. General point, general point X and X. So as I said, we know that the Pezzo freefold is covered by these lines and there are finitely many through a general point. So this is a certain number. Now, um, D, this we already had, so that's the degree of X. So this is H cube. And now here comes the, the fun part, this number R, that's the number of lines in a general Delpezzo surface. That's surface D in H. Okay, so you see that the class, the formula which gives you the class of the total dual VMRT, and so which by the lemma decides if the tangent bundle is big, this formula depends on the number of lines in the corresponding Del Pezzo surface. Okay, and this is somehow this is somehow the hint which I've been talking about uh, why there might, in the end, there might be some relation between tangent bundle of X and tangent bundle of D. Uh, this formula tells you, well, somehow the properties of this, uh, of this Delpezzo surface, they, uh, they come up in the proof. They come up in the proof. And of course, so once you have written down this formula, I mean, all these numbers which appear I mean, they're known, okay? So number of lines on, on given uh, Delpezzo surfaces are, are known, and also for these Delpezzo freefolds, uh, this number K is known. So you just have to look up the numbers in the literature and uh, you do the computation. And it turns out that, so somehow the, of course, the crucial part of the formula is this. And uh, this is negative. It turns out that it's negative exactly uh, in the degree five case, okay? So this gives you somehow the bigness and then the other cases, um, they are not big. Okay, so this is, uh, I, I like this formula because somehow it sheds some light on this, this mystery which we observe. 
And uh, I also like this formula because somehow um, it's a classical argument which, uh, which leads to it. So uh, for the proof, for the proof, so somehow, um, I mean, there's some general technology which tells us we will just have to understand some invariants of the universal family. Okay, so we have to understand um, some invariants of the universal family. Universal family. Yeah. Universal family. So what do I mean by this? So you have your freefold X and then uh, you have S. So this is, the, this is a surface that parametrizes these lines. Lines on X. And over this, you have the universal family of lines, which is the projectivization of a rank two vector bundle. Okay, so this is the universal family. This is the universal family. And you have this evaluation map. Okay, and so somehow we can see from, you know, general considerations that if you understand enough about this universal family, then you can cook up uh, the formula. And uh, now how here comes, uh, comes the point. Understanding this kind of family uh, is a classical exercise since Clements and Griffiths, okay? So in their famous paper of irrationality of the cubic freefold, um, they compute uh, the invariance of the Fano surface of lines of this uh, cubic freefold, okay? So they consider exactly this uh, kind of situation. And now you look up their proof and what you see is that they show in their case that the second churn class of this vector bundle V, which you choose in a certain way, this is 27, which is of course the number of lines on the cubic, on cubic surface, okay? So they introduced this print, this, uh, this, uh, this line of computing things, which tells you that uh, in order to put your hand on this vector bundle V, uh, this hyperplane section is, and its lines are very useful. And uh, we kind of copy their proof in our uh, more general setting. And uh, then it goes through exactly along the same lines and gives you this formula. Okay. And so uh, I'm very happy that uh, this, uh, this classical argument uh, works in our, in our case and yields this, uh, this interesting formula. And since I'm basically out of time, maybe I should finish now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, do we have any questions? You can unmute yourselves and ask directly. Okay, I'll, I'll ask a question. So, in the statement of of the theorem, mm -hmm. um, so as you said, uh, so it can it can jump when, in principle, when you move in the family, and and mm -hmm. it's quite likely to jump in when it moves into a singular case, right? Yes. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe I should have noticed it from the proof, but I don't quite understand why you cannot get the um, the statement for d equal four self-effective in uh, dimension three? Uh, we, 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 we do get it. We, we, do we, get it? we, we do get it. Um, there is one, uh, so there is, so in, in uh, so for the free folds, uh, the degree four case, is pseudo-effective and we compute it. Uh, so it goes along this line, lines. We just show that somehow R, D, R over D minus K is uh, zero. 
Okay, so in this case, the numbers exactly add up. And so we get also the, the corresponding statement. Um, what we do not get is in the lower degree cases, um, there might be some non-generic members of the family which are weird. So in the sense that uh, the, the final surface of lines uh, might get reducible. This could happen and then this messes up the computation. And so for the generic number, the final surface is, uh, is irreducible and then uh, we prove non pseudo effectivity, but there might be one or two weird cases. Ah, so in, in degree four, it's pseudo, it's pseudo effective. In degree four, it's pseudo effective. And in lower degrees, it may happen that you still have a smooth member, but that's a special, but it's a smooth where it's not, it, it, uh, it is so effective, but the general yeah. member is not. Yes, yes, uh, this, uh, this is possible, this is possible, um, but let me check. So the only case is in degree two, in degree two, we have to assume that X is general in its deformation family. I see. And if it's not general, you don't have the answer, but it may no, be the same. No, it might become pseudo effective. I mean, this would be very exciting. This, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so certainly our computation uh, does not uh, yield this, this special case. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's not pseudo effective but uh, we were not able to work this out. And uh, I mean, even, you know, really going into the projective geometry of the situation, we could not, uh, not decide it for the, non for the special, special degree two cases. So this would be, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be even more interesting if, if it jumps in families. Um, in general, bigness is, should is not invariant in families and I have not seen a reason so far why it should behave, uh, have a better behavior uh, as usual. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No. Okay, so the next talk is on Thursday, it will be Joaquin Moraga from Princeton um at four five five pm sorry three pm G, gmt i think thank you very much andreas it was very very interesting thank you for the invitation